Pipe Network presents. On this episode of season four, let's talk. When you, when I read something, it it has to not only appeal to me, but it should also make me uh, think. Uh, that's the reason why I like to read uh, the writing by the author authors that I just said. Hey folks, welcome back to The Rajiv Show and I'm your host Rajiv Doreswamy and this show aims to help reach out to those who are currently struggling in life and to remind you that life is indeed beautiful when you're inspired to make it your own. Today we're going to talk to Baguio's finest copywriter, Bo Moldes, a friend of mine, uh, an amazing, amazing uh, conversationalist. Bo, how are you doing today? Thank you very much, Rajiv, and that was a really amazing introduction. Thank you so much, and I hope that your listeners can also learn from what I've learned uh, as a copywriter and, of course, as a baggy boy. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. All right. Uh, for, for our folks, for our listeners, give us a little bit of background as to who you are. Give, paint us mm-hmm. a picture of your life, if, if you may. Oh, All right. So um, in terms of work, I help uh, biohackers, bulletproof coaches, and uh, not Banyel method practitioners get more customers and clients by creating uh, content that engages and converts them. Uh, I have been working as a copywriter since 2017. And aside, Aside from copywriting, I work uh, in content marketing and also in social media. Uh, another thing that I do is, is I am part of an online group that teaches social media to freelancers, entrepreneurs, and home-based workers called Social Media Academy. And I'm also an aspiring novelist, and I'm going to launch my novel slash book by the end of 2020. So that's what I do, what I do as, uh, as a professional. Uh, and I actually graduated with a degree in agriculture, and, and I do have a license, but it turns out that this isn't for me. So I focused uh, working in ESL before, you know, I was teaching Japanese, Korean, Chinese students online how to speak English. But then I veered towards um, digital marketing, content marketing, copywriting, social media, because it beat me to become the novelist and the writer that I wanted that I want to be. Um, I'm born in Baguio, but I have lived in different places. I have lived in Los Baños, Laguna, Davao City, uh, Cabacan, Cotabato in the south in Mino. But for the most part I am now a permanent resident of the city of Pines. So I'm a Baggy boy through and through. Awesome, awesome. Uh the question that I normally ask my guest is who were you in high school? Uh if you and I were classmates. <laughs> like Okay. Uh, well, I was actually I was actually one of the class nerds, and that's that's speaking uh, too much because I actually studied in a science high school, Philippine oh. science high school in 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 uh, Mindanao, uh, the Davao campus, Southern Mindanao campus. You know, you have a really really smart individuals who are really good in, in science and math. And technology, uh, but I was more of a, like sort of the English nerd. <laughs> um, I wrote for the school paper, and uh, for the most part, I hang out in the library. So mm. I realized early on that I wanted to live a life where where uh, I would like to write as a living. 
I mean, like, I had an idea back in high school. So I was that guy. Uh, the, the reader, uh, the writer sort of guy in, in, in a world of uh, science personalities. Interesting. Uh, the second question that I wanted to ask now is, uh, who's your greatest motivation and why? Well, um, you know, I grew up in a evangelical Christian household. Uh, I grew up being prayed over by my pastor dad, who was a former uh, college dean and uh, forester. Uh, my, my dad was a former forester and college dean in Benguet State University in La Trinidad, Benguet. Uh, and then he decided to become like a full-time pastor. Um, I would always remember that he would say in, in prayers that, uh, that we would grow in, in stature and wisdom to be pleasing God and making a difference in the lives of others. So, so for me, that, that's sort of a motivation uh, to make a positive difference in the lives of other people. Uh, like, you know, when you say you make a difference, you make an impact, a positive impact in their lives. Uh, and, and it kind of aligned with what I wanted to do, to write. Um, I see that, that when I write novels, uh, that it will make a positive impact on the readers. And when you write a novel, it, it gives you a, a sense of immortality that your words will transcend your uh, human existence, that when people read it, they can actually uh, see and change their lives out of that reading. Um, so for me, I guess that's, that's one of the biggest motivations to create writing that makes a difference and makes, makes a difference and makes an impact in the lives of, of people. Um, and I want to write it in story because, you know, story makes the truth sound clear. There's a saying by Picasso that I will paraphrase to relate to fiction. You know, fiction uh, tells the truth through lies or uh, fiction is the lie that tells the truth. So I want to tell truth that will impact humanity through the writing that I create. So that, for me, is one of the biggest motivations that I have in living. Wow, that's really powerful. Uh, yeah, to continue the questions, what made you who you are at this level, at this stage? Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm going to be honest with you. I haven't actually gotten the clarity that I have now. Uh, I mean, I got the clarity that I have now, uh, I think, 2018 or 2019, so, somewhere along those lines. Um, I got into a coaching call with one of the best freelancers here in the Philippines. Uh, his name is John Pagulayan. Um, one of the things that he made me realize is I have to look for clarity instead of certainty because, you know, in our life, uh, life is very uncertain, but you have a clarity of purpose, a clarity of, of direction, and a clarity of action. You, you can actually reach to whatever goal that it is that you need. Um, and um, I started freelancing because, you know, I wanted it as a way for me to uh, earn money and, and also to uh, do my work as a writer. And uh, in my freelancing journey, I have encountered mentors. Uh, I have made mistakes. I have pissed off some clients by, by not working for them really well. And uh, one of the things that helped me in freelancing is, is a book by Bob Birch. It's called The Go-Giver. Uh, in, in this book, A Go-Giver, it, it teaches you about uh, you give value. Um, that is your, your life as, as a freelancer. I mean, like right now in, in this pandemic, there are a lot of people who want to become freelancers. And the top of their mind is to be so they can survive. Now, we can understand that. But if you want to succeed as freelancers, we have to look at how we can produce value and how we can get value in return. So for me, that's what made me who I am. 
Uh, and, and to be honest, I, I took a degree of agriculture back in university, but it turns out that it isn't for me. Uh, for me, I, I see myself as a writer. I see myself as a novelist. And with that in mind, with that kind of clarity that kind of gelled in 2018 or 2019, I am seeing myself clearly what I want to do. Interesting. Uh, fourth question that I want to ask is, if today was yesterday, what would you keep and what would you let go of? Um, what would I keep? I guess it's, I'd like to keep my, you know, my skills as a writer because it's sort of my bread and butter right now. It's helping me pay the bills. It's giving me the cash flow that I need, need to, you know, survive and, and thrive. And I, of course, I want to keep my family. Uh, to be honest, I'm not with them. My, my brothers are in Los Banos Laguna and my dad is in, in Davao City, but I want to keep them. Uh, what I want to lose are the limiting beliefs that plagued me before, that, that I am not enough, uh, that I can't do things, that I am not worthy. I want to leave that. I mean, right now, um, I have a little bit of that but I am overcoming that, but I hope that I can leave that all behind uh, in, in the past. And I guess one more thing that I want to leave in the yesterday is the poundage that I have. I mean, I'm very overweight. You have seen me in person, but if you see me right now, you'd probably say, hey, Bo, you're like this big, chubby, huggable person because you know, I'm sort of big. Uh, so I, I'm going to work on that, by the way. I have a mentor who's who's teaching me how to, you know, let go of all these things, starting with the mind. So uh, limiting beliefs beliefs, and the fat <laughs> and excess poundage that I have, I want to leave that for yesterday. Right now, I want to move forward with, with helping people, loving the people that, that are dear to me and reaching out and, and uh, making a difference with uh, the people that I meet. Awesome. And uh, the last question that I normally ask is, uh, what are your thoughts for the future? Well, uh, for me right now, you know, people are actually really scared with, with uh, right now recording it. We're, we're talking about this in the season where we have COVID-19, right? Um, yeah. And it's pretty scary to go out, to reach out to people, to, to make an actual meaningful human connection. But the way I see it in, in the near future, future, we can go back and connect to each other in a very meaningful way. I mean, even with this kind of distance uh, online, we can make a meaningful human connection. So for me, I want a future where, where we can actually connect with people, have that meaningful connection. Um, and uh, right now during this time, during this COVID season, this, this pandemic, we have, uh, we have an opportunity to actually make ourselves better. We have an opportunity to refine ourselves, to try to connect to people online, make a difference and provide value. I'm not going to say that that right now is is pretty easy it's not. But for me in the near future there are possibilities that we can actually take and and, and uh use not only to better ourselves or to enrich ourselves but also to make a difference and better the lives of others. So for me the future is potential. It's possibility. It's something that we have to grasp. But before we do that, we have to refine and make ourselves better. Awesome. Before we go go on to our art talk segment, I would like to take a short break. And we will be back. Stick around, folks, after this break. Skillshare is an online community where you can explore thousands of classes in design 
photography, business, podcasting, and more. New customers can get started with a free trial to get unlimited access to the entire catalog with premium membership. Sign up and use the promo code ANNUAL30AFF to get your free trial now. Looking for a podcast on TV and movie discussions? Try Review. Catch new episodes every Saturday, 6 p.m. on your favorite podcast streaming platform. I'm your boy, Wesley. Don't forget to smile today and see you in the next review. Review, review, review. Folks, welcome back. And I'm here with my friend, a legendary copywriter and writer, as mentioned in the earlier uh, interview, in earlier conversation. Uh, Bo, uh, let's talk about hey. some arts, shall we? Uh, my oh, first course, question is, um, who are your top three writers? Can be any oh. writer from the earlier times to this time. Well, uh, basically, there are three. Uh, actually, I would actually say four, probably more. Uh, first, there's uh, Jordan Peterson. Uh, he's not technically a writer, per se. He's a psy- psychi- psychologist. psychologist or a psychiatrist. But I like the way that he writes about you know personal responsibility, individual responsibility, and all that. Hmm. Uh, I also like Tim Ferriss. Tim Ferriss wrote the four-hour series, uh, four-hour work week, four-hour chef, four-hour body, and a tribe of mentors and tools of titans. Um, in my in my market, the people that I help, he is also considered a sort of a biohacker. Um, he he had a series where he learned skills within a week, week and he did it really well. So he's another writer that I look up to. Uh, another one is Ryan Holiday. Mm-hmm. Ryan Holiday wrote um, up oh, The Obstacle is the Way, Ego is the Enemy, Stillness is the Key. Uh, in terms of Stoicism, I, I like the way that he writes. It's very easy and it's uh, uh, good for the way that you think. And lastly... Uh, Robert Green. Robert Green wrote uh, the Forty-Eight Laws of Power, uh, the Art of Seduction, Thirty-Three Strategies of War, Laws of Human Nature, a uh, Mastery. Um, if you are working, uh, his his books are some of the books that you must read. It's really it really is amazing. Yeah. Wow. So these are the writers that I look up to. Uh, in the present, of course, I have other writers that I look up to uh, when it comes to literature. Uh, for example, there's uh, Stephen Pressfield. He wrote he wrote uh, Gates of uh, uh, Gates of Fire. Uh, he wrote uh, The War of Art. Um, if you really want to learn how to how to think like an artist, you have to do that. Yeah. These are some interesting stuff. Uh, we'll, we'll put some of the links of these books on the description. These are some of interesting course, reads. Of course. Uh, of course, of course. Speaking of reads, I'm sure that you've gone through a lot, a lot of books. Um, if you were to... Uh, now, it's not really a negative way of thinking of it. If you were to take a particular writer, a particular book, and do it in your own style, Who would it be? And uh, interestingly, uh, what what difference would you give to the person's style and approach to writing? Hmm. Um. You see, when it comes to the writing, uh, I'm looking at something that would would provoke thought, would make you think, and it's an easy read. Hmm. Um, for most people, they would try to make things more intellectual, but When, you, when I read something, it, it has to not only appeal to me, but it should also make me uh, think. Uh, that's the reason why I like to read uh, the writing by the author, authors that I just said. Hmm. Um, they leave a very uh, indelible mark or a, a mark within me that, that I um, get into. 
and uh, when I read these authors, it makes me realize that, hey, uh, I'm not just a person living for myself, but mm -hmm. I'm also a person living for others. I'm also a person that has a purpose. So uh, when it comes to the, re uh, the books that I read, those are the things that I look at. Of course, um, the books that I've read, like, say, for example, Tim Ferriss, uh, Robert Greene, they have been, you know, suggested reading for me. So I got to read them as well. And since I'm working as a freelance writer, I also look at these writers uh, as a way to help me with my freelancing career. Uh, a lot of people think that when you go to freelancing, you just work, but mm -hmm. they're is a lot of reading involved so uh, if you are a freelancer you have to read a lot of books to help you with your mindset not just to uh, improve your skill so these are the reasons why i got into reading these books interesting uh, for me personally er earlier earlier on before i started collecting a lot of books fiction and all this stuff I was introduced to um, uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad. That was my very, very first book. And um, yeah, I was more of a visual guy. I think my, my learning is more on the visual side. Uh, granted that uh, I did arts and music and, you know, I look at things in a more visual prospect. Someone introduced this book to me, Rich Dad Poor Dad, and I finished it in weeks. And then it's oh. funny. It's funny once you get a whiff of a nice, good book, you know, you, you have this momentum and you just want to just keep reading, reading. And then after I finish that, I, I'm obsessed with a lot of Mario Puzo. And, and you know, I've been collecting, you know, <laughs> been hunting. You know, there's something to do with the mafia, mafia storytelling and Mario Puzo's um, brilliant storytelling. Oh, yeah. Uh, and yeah, speaking of mafia stuff, I, I've always, uh, I've seen like uh, the Godfather trilogy like three or four times, five times, I think even more now. Because uh, it's every time I, I watch it, it's, it's it's somewhat it, it it's interesting. But then when I read the book, I, I finished the book. I think with it, I think last year, it, it's it's a different. It's, it's it's such a different feeling. It's like you're entering a realm, and you know, mm. and uh, that's the beauty of uh, writing. Uh, I I really appreciate the art form. I did attempt the earlier times, but uh, yeah. It, it takes a lot of practice, I guess, for for people, for young people, especially those who who are still starting out and stuff like that. You know, it's any best advice for uh, speaking of starting out? Like, I hope some tu uh, some people who are tuning in, do you have any mm -hmm. best advice about uh, uh, on writing and stuff? Like, what's your what is your best quotation or advice on on that? Well, uh, not really quotation, but more of like practice. Mm. When you are beginning a as a writer, uh, and you don't, you do not have any uh, writing experience. A lot, uh, qual quantity is quality. What do I mean by that? By that, it's like um, you have to write as much as you can, like every day. Just write. Um, basically, it's it's like an extension of uh, the the saying. Uh, just write hmm. because you know to become a, a good writer you just have to write and if you're starting out uh, the more you write the better because uh, the more that you write the more you weed out the bad things that, hmm. that you can write until the good things will come out so if you're beginning as a writer for, for our listeners if you're beginning as a writer uh, hmm. get yourself a, a journal uh, start a blog um, write uh, post something on social media, write very long posts in social media. People will like that. People, There will be people who will read. Write as much as you can. It doesn't matter if it's uh, bad grammar. It doesn't matter if it's, uh, you know, um, unclear. Because the longer you write, the more you see uh, yourself becoming better. So at the start of your writing uh, journey, Quantity is equal to quality. <clears throat> wow. Write as much as you can. Um, I saw myself uh, in that way. Uh, I started writing a journal every day. I have to finish like a page for my journal. I would 
uh, write something like an article. Mm -hmm. I would post something in Facebook or LinkedIn, like what I'm doing right now. Uh, mm -hmm. The important thing is you write every single day. The more that you write every single day, the better your chances of writing are because, you know, um, you get used to it. But I'm going to be honest with you. One of the hardest things that uh, you can do as a writer is to begin writing. I mean, like, um, hmm. <clears throat> if I am given a uh, writing assignment for, from a client, uh, huh. there are times that it would be really, really hard for me to write to start, begin, uh, whatever the assignment is. But when I begin typing on the keyboard or writing on a, a piece of paper, huh. uh, the thoughts just flow. Um, it just flows. So you do have to prepare your writing. You do have to outline whatever it is that you're writing. And then as you outline it uh, and as you go write it, the words hmm. just flow. Uh, you do have to take preparation if you're going to write something formally. But if you are beginning, you need to get used to writing because I'm going to be honest with you. Hmm. Writing is very uncomfortable. But when you are there, you actually established a flow. Uh, I, I learned this from from uh, this uh, psychiatrist or psychologist. His name is Mihai Shikshent Mihai. Uh, he's a Hungarian uh, person, and um, he wrote a book called Flow. Mm. Um, uh, and then he he said that it, it it's very uncomfortable to begin something, but when you are in the middle of it, mm. you actually have a certain sense of flow. It's like you're at one with whatever it is that you're doing. You are not self-conscious because your focus is what you're doing. So uh, that is my suggestion for, for people who would like to become good writers. Um, I wouldn't say that I'm an expert writer, but I believe that I'm competent enough to uh, write something, not just for my clients, but also for myself. So yeah. Some Quantity is uh, quality. That, that's interesting. That the last this last statement you said with with flow. <laughs> when you said that, mm -hmm. the, the first trigger that that hit me in in my head was this um this this lost uh, interview with Bruce Lee where he talks about the philosophy of the water. It, it's oh, somewhat yeah. It's somewhat yeah. Yeah, somewhat similar. Yeah, relevant relevant to that because you know, uh, water. You know, I, I don't want to repeat what he said, but. The, it it goes with the same saying that like you know water. flow yeah <laughs> flows and crash and it's it's an interesting th if coming to think of it, it's an interesting thing. It, it's funny. It, it's always I, I agree with you when when it says starting out is always the toughest. It's, it's it's funny because when you're sitting down there with a piece of paper or, or, or with a tablet or, or a laptop or something, the first question that even for me sometimes is that. My earlier years, when I uh, my earlier times when I used to you you do the blog, uh, as a lot of people know that I I do a blog post every Mondays. I used to get uh, a lot of I I used to get uh, I used to cram my work. Uh, earlier, I used to I used to get a burnout because um, when I used to cram my work, it uh, I I used to work uh, at Sundays. And it's so intense <laughs> that uh, oh yeah, uh, even though the deadline is like around, uh, I schedule post it. Even though I schedule post it, it's still stressful, nonetheless. <laughs> Which oh, is yeah. ironic, yeah, yeah. you know. The the first question is, what do I want to write about? What do I want to speak about? You know, and um, it's always that. Uh, is it is it an uh, thing uh, inevitable that? Every time you write, you you'll always have this. Um, uh, what, what was that mental block or what, uh, uh, what's the word? Oh, you mean a write, writer's block? Writer's block. block. Yeah. yeah, that one. That one. That's the word I was going with. Yeah. Is it natural or do you have to? Do you, is there a remedy? You know, drink lime juice or you know <laughs> anything, <laughs> anything like well, that. <laughs> for me, there's like uh, uh, one. one uh, two to three reasons why there is writer's block. Number one, you're not really clear on what you want to write. Number two, you're lazy. <laughs> you you just, uh, I just, I just don't want to write. So you make an excuse like, I don't want to write because I have writer's block. But deep inside, you're, you're, you're actually lazy. Number three, you're actually exhausted. So um, 
I guess the simple answer is just to write. That's the number one remedy for writer's block. But uh, with the reasons that I've given, there are actually ways to counter that. Uh, number one reason, one problem why you have writer's block is because of clarity, right? If mm. you, you don't have any clarity on what you're going to write. So uh, if you, ha you, you have a clarity problem, uh, Again, you have to write down why you're supposed to write, what you're supposed to write. You can write it in an outline. You can write it in, in like a prose something, or you can like list down things on why you're going to write this. Write this. And once you have those reasons and, and once you have everything there, um, you can actually use that as a starting point for your writing. And uh, with that kind of process, the writer's block is eliminated. Eliminated. Uh, the next reason is because you're just lazy. <laughs> if you are lazy, uh, I mean, like, you know, everybody gets, everybody says, oh, I'm a diligent person. I do this, responsible and all that. But everyone can experience uh, this point where they have to be, where they feel that they're lazy. They feel like they don't want to do this. Well, mm. yeah, sometimes you do have to chill. But if uh, you have, like, a deadline or something and you can't write, <laughs> Uh, you, you have that actually removes the laziness. Like, say for example, um, I've actually experienced this because, you know, living alone, uh, yeah. there is no one checking up on me, except yeah. on my online contacts, like my my bosses, my clients, and all of that. Sometimes they would send me a deadline. Okay, you need to write this by this day, right? So, uh, I would have to write. So if you're lazy. You have to remind yourself why you're supposed to do that. Hmm. Uh, another is you need to have a level of accountability. Like somebody will check you up, like a partner or a boss or some or someone who would say that, hey, you need to do this. Hey, you need to do that. Um, and another thing is uh, you have to have what I guess I'd call negative motivation. Hmm. Uh, yeah, let me explain. So um, in, in his book, I guess it's uh, The 4-Hour Workweek or The 4-Hour Chef, uh, mm -hmm. Tim Ferry says that, you know, uh, for us to be motivated, there's like a positive motivation and a negative motivation. So when you say positive mo motivation, it's like, what am I going to gain if I mm -hmm. accomplish this? So for example, okay, uh, I'm going to have to write an art article and um, my... Uh, my deadline is uh, this Sunday, hmm. and if I pass it on or before Sunday, I'll be getting $500 for that article. So that's a positive mo motivation because if I accomplish it, I get something like uh, money or hmm. a reward. But a negative motivation is actually more motivating to people because people hate to something. We have... Uh, loss aversion. So for example, okay, if you do not accomplish this task, like writing this article hmm. on or before Sunday, you will lose your job. So mm -hmm. it will scare you into writing. Yeah, that's uh, intense. <laughs> finishing. That is intense. That is intense because nobody wants the feeling of loss. I mean, if you lost your, lost your job, you don't have anything to pay the bills, buy you food, get something for enjoyment. So that is one way to counter laziness, right? But that is not sustainable because it adds up more stress and it makes you realize that, hey, I don't want to do this. I don't want to get this feeling anymore. So uh, yeah, you need accountability. You need this kind. Um, but I guess the best reason, the best way to counter like um, the laziness factor of, of writer's block is understand why you're doing it. Oh, I'm doing this not only for myself. Mm -hmm. I'm doing this for my family and something like that. Um, when you have a response, I mean, like, um, I'm a single guy, right? Mm -hmm. So this kind of reason why, it, it's, it's not really that big on me. But if I have a family, mm -hmm. like if I have a wife and kids, and then I have to write, Hmm. That laziness is countered because I have to provide for my family. But since I'm a single guy, you know, I can be happy, go lucky <laughs> anytime I want. Yeah. So um, that's it. Accountability, your reason why, negative motivation. So, yeah. Of course, uh, the last element is you're tired, you're exhausted. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, the easy remedy with that is um, rest. Take like a day <laughs> or two off from writing. Of course, man, man, you're human. You need to recharge. And you have to understand that you need what we call a mental bandwidth. Right? So uh, Just like your Wi-Fi. mental bandwidth. <laughs> yeah, something like that. It, it's more of... It's more of uh, what you can do at a specific period of time. Like, say, for example, for me, um, I can only be productive within a four to six hour window. Hmm. Yeah. After that, my mind is fried. Right. Really? So, uh, yeah, yeah. That, that's for me. <laughs> so I have to schedule accordingly. So if there are tasks that, that don't really need, uh, much of thinking, like say, for example, I'll do some chores, wash some dishes, cook some food, clean the house. You don't need your, your mental, a lot of mental faculty for that. Yeah. I can do it. Yeah. But writing is so um, mentally draining uh, from you researching the topic, creating an outline, writing the draft and uh, editing it is very draining so uh you do need to rest you do need to uh take care of your mental bandwidth uh that's why when i have a writing task uh for example given to me by my clients or for my work Mm -hmm. i would have to schedule that as the only thing that i will be doing for the day so for example uh one of my one of my clients would say okay i need an article that is 1500 words in length, right? So hmm. for me, for the whole day, that's the only thing that I'm gonna have to do that takes a long time because it is draining. Writing can be very draining. So yeah, you have to rest and you also have to uh, pace yourself and schedule the things that you have to do. Wow. I was expecting more, more than just the, the lime juice kind of thing. <laughs> would have well, been yeah. Only, <laughs> if only. Well, well you know. <laughs> oh, oh, here's another, here's another tip, tip for for writers, yeah. uh, because you know one of one of the things that one of the advice uh, that I got from my mentors is this: hmm. you can, you have to write drunk, but edit sober. So. If you're into tequila or <laughs> into alcoholic drinks, it's nice to have lime juice there as a chaser or something so yeah. that uh, you can write as well, write as much as you can. Because when you're writing something, um, when you're creating your draft, yeah. you just have to write continuously. And uh, you don't want your critical factor in your mind to, to edit it while you're writing. You're oh, going to yeah. have to edit it after you're writing. It delays So more, you just yeah. need to, you know, yeah, you just need to dump out all those thoughts on uh, paper or, or on the document. Um, if you're going to ask me what my writing process is when it comes to writing my articles, what mm. I do is, uh, number one, we set a goal. Like, mm. okay, who is this for? Who am I writing for? And then... After setting that goal, I would have to uh, create a topic, a list of topics, and then a list of titles. And then from that title, I would have to go research uh, the things that are needed there and then create an outline while I Mm. research. So when I write an outline, it is very detailed Mm. from like, okay, this is what I'm going to write for the introduction. And... Uh, these are the references. I would have to include links because I, I also write um, online, mm. right? So I need to have those links there so that when I write, I can just put in the links there mm. so that I can um, uh, show that uh, what I'm writing that I, what I'm writing is not plagiarized, right? So after I have uh, created the outline and included the links. I would then create the draft. The, the draft I would usually write within an hour or two. Mm. And then after writing the draft, I would have to edit it. If I mm. do self-editing, I use Grammarly. 
Ooh. Because, uh, yeah, it actually is useful, not just for grammar, but it also checks, um, it also checks plagiarism. So we don't want to have plagiarized work because if the work is plagiarized, um, the client would have legal troubles, yeah. right? So they'll take fifty I check... cents. <laughs> they'll take fifty cents oh, yeah. off of the thing, <laughs> off of the oh, yeah, whole hard yeah. work, and yeah, you have to go from from the start I know, again. I know. <laughs> and I'm gonna be honest with you, Rajiv. Um, yeah. The first writing gig that I had, and I learned this the hard way. Uh, Ooh. I wrote. Uh, about five or ten articles because I didn't have any time. Huh. I just copy pasted, and Ooh. then <laughs> that's yeah, suicide. yeah, that's writing suicide. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> that is that is writing suicide. But that was me starting back then in 2017. So um, I did not run away from the client. Uh, what I did was I gave her a refund. Huh. So she paid me, if I'm not mistaken, about five thousand Australian dollars. For, for that gig but i had to return it back because if i did not return it back uh there will be a big chance that she will sued. you know get sued or something yeah mm. she she might get yeah aside from that and of course it's also part of my reputation as well so mm. i gave it back and then i learned from that okay i don't want to be plagiarizing anymore so yeah uh I use Grammarly to check the grammar and uh, the links, uh, the writing, so it is not plagiarized. Mm. And after checking it with Grammarly, I use another online tool called Hemingway App. Uh, Hemingway App, what it does is it checks the readability of your writing, mm. okay? Be because, you know, when you go online to read, you do not read at your, uh, like, uh, graduated level. Like say hmm. for example you're a you're a university graduate right hmm. so as a university graduate uh, for example you are like uh, a PhD in sociology hmm. when you go to work you read you read stuff at that level a university hmm. level uh, reading level but when you go online uh, you don't read that way you try to it's you try to read something that is simpler. Because when people read online, they read at a fifth grade reading level. Hmm. So uh, what I do after editing it in Grammarly, I put it in HemingwayApp.com. Hmm. It's free. <laughs> so when, when you put stuff on HemingwayApp.com, it will tell you, okay, this is at a 12th, 12th grade uh, reading level. So to reduce that, uh, I make it into shorter sentences. I use... Um, I don't use big words hmm. like instead of saying um instead of saying like um liberate it's better to say to free right because mm. it's easier because you know people read at a lower reading level now let me tell you something uh you know one reason why Donald Trump is president in, of the US hmm. because during his time he was the only one who talked at that level Fifth, he talked at a fifth grade reading level so that people could understand him more. Ah, okay. And, uh, so the uh, you want that makes sense. Makes sense. No. So you, you want to write in a way that is really simple so that your audience can understand what you're trying to say. So as much as possible, I set the reading level to a fifth grade or even lesser. So if I get to a zero grade reading level, then that's very good writing. Um, it's, I guess I remember what one of my mentors would say. His name is Alan, mm. Alan Ngo. Uh, he is one of the best email marketers and email copywriters in the Philippines. He, he would say that, why use a $10 word when you can use a $1 word, word? So you use something simpler so that people can understand you more. You want to connect your you want to connect to your readers. Hmm. You're not there to intimidate or you're not there to, you know, show off. Hmm. Uh, you want to get their understanding. So as much as possible, you write in a very, very simple language. So after going through that uh, process of uh, 
uh, brainstorming topics, titles, uh, drafting, and editing. Mm. Uh, I would then pass my document to my client. So usually when I write, uh, it would take about four to five hours to do so, maybe even less. Uh, I think I've written an article that's like two to three hours, uh, for two to three hours, uh, because a lot of the research takes time. Uh, and then you need to be clear on what you're writing, because if you are clear, if for me, if my outline is clear, mm. it is actually easier for me to write. So again, uh, if you don't want to have writer's block, uh, you need to have the clarity for your writing. You need to be clear on what you're writing. Yeah. That's, that's, clarity. you just took me to school. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> you took me to school just to take me out to school. Is, is, that's interesting. Um, well, well, you know, I hope our, our listeners would also uh, get to that because, yeah, well, well, you know, writing does sound glamorous on, on some mm. things like, hey, I'm a writer. Hey, I've published a book. People don't see the effort that a writer does from from cr uh, thinking of a topic, uh, creating an outline, uh, uh. researching. Researching is really, really, really bloody. And uh, writing the draft and all that, it's, it's, it's really not easy. Uh, it's not glamorous doing it. It's funny. It's funny coming to think. Sorry, I interrupted you on that part. It's, yeah, it's no funny. Worries. The way I think of it is the way they look. Uh, uh, the way uh, people, young young people who are young hopefuls. I, I don't mean to de de demean their their hopes for being a writer. I mean it's oh, a good, yeah. yeah yeah. It is. It's it's good to to find your own writing spirit and stuff like that. Yeah. But it's just like I guess it's somewhat connected to the social media, Instagram, Facebook uh, thing. Oh, yeah. You know where they it's see. Instant. Yeah, they see a, a, a famous writer like, uh, let's take, for example, J.K. Rowling's, you know, and uh -huh. just because J.K. Rowling's can do a Harry Potter, everybody can do a Harry Potter, everybody can do no. uh, a Godfather, everybody can do this and everybody can no. do that. You know? and <laughs> once they sit down, they realize their, li their poor life choices and then, you know, you, you've, you've deteriorated a writer from, from his own dreams and, you know, instead of changing the world, probably out there be doing something else, you know? That's, that's the sad, sad reality, you know? Of, but, well, uh, but being writer is a hard work. It's, 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 much, it's it the is. same. It so is the much. same as, as much as being all the artists and stuff like that. So, yeah. Well, you know, uh, Rajiv, if only people can see what goes on in the mind of a writer hmm. if only they see the struggles that a writer has hmm. if only they see that sometimes you know a lot of writers people romanticize the fact that writers some that a lot of writers have mental uh, issues mental illnesses hmm. right because uh, writing takes a lot out on your mind and people do not see that. People see that, hey, this person published a book. Yeah. Uh, hey, this person is famous. And then uh, if they don't like what the writer has written, they will bash them. Yeah. Say, oh, your writing is crap. Your writing is not good. They don't realize how much time, effort, energy, emotion yeah. uh, that, that the writer puts in the writing. Yeah. So, the heart um, and soul. You're right. It's the heart and soul. I mean, like um, painters, when they paint – they paint on their canvas, not just the paints or the pigments or, or uh, any other thing that they put on the canvas. They, they actually paint their souls. It's the same yeah. thing with writers. So uh, when, when some writer writes a book and then somebody bashes it, and then when you look at the basher or the troll, like, dude, it's easy for people to criticize something that they don't like. But uh, it's it doesn't feel good because they can criticize all they want, but if they haven't done anything, they don't have mm. the credibility. Yeah. Um, so, hey, yeah, that's just me. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, wow, that's that's been an educate educational conversation. I mean, I <laughs> I you, felt man. like I've sa I've sat down with the copywriting legend himself. Uh, oh, you're very kind. Thank you. 
if you have like a, a few word of thoughts for future copywriters who are tuning in, uh, what would you say to them? Uh, I have a couple. So number one, get used to discomfort because writing is very uncomfortable. Yeah, I love writing. Uh, writing is my bread and butter. Uh, I cannot pay the bills if I haven't written really well. Mm. Uh, if I don't get articles and uh, social media copy out there, I don't get paid. Um, and um, yeah, I, I need to get used to the discomfort of writing because it will be very, very affordable when you're writing. Uh, people do not see that in writing. You see, oh, he's a writer. He's really <laughs> smart. His job is easy. It's not. It, it's, it never is easy. It's very uncomfortable. Uh, but when we are on the zone, we're, when we yeah. are in that flow, yeah. right? You know, like when, when Bruce Lee said, be like water. Yeah. Right? It can crash yeah. or it can flow and so on and so forth. When we are in that level of flow, it's, it's one of the most intense and pleasurable things that we can feel. So that's number one. Uh, be comfortable with discomfort. Be, get used to discomfort because... There will be a lot of discomfort when you do uh, writing, or in this case, copywriting. Number mm -hmm. two, uh, learn about persuasion. Uh, because copywriting, aside from being called persuasion, and, uh, I'm sorry, aside from being called, aside from me calling it hypnosis in print, copywriting is persuasion in print, mm. right? Or salesmanship in print. So like, uh, I guess you have experienced somebody selling to you one-on-one -on -one. like hmm. hey sir uh this is a new product this is uh blah 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 when you use this you will get blah 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 it's hmm. like a one-on-one -on -one thing because they're talking to you copywriters do that but it's like them talking to a thousand people or more because it's written and it can be replicated uh a long time or uh in a different way a lot hmm. of ways right so you have to understand persuasion um, a very good way to learn about persuasion. Uh, there's this uh, persuasion expert. His name is Blair Warren. Uh, he has this book or he has this training program called uh, One, Persu One Sentence Persuasion Course. Mm. Uh, and um, if you are listening, if people are listening, this will be a good place for you to start about persuasion, you know. Uh, let me quote to you what he said about persuading people. You know, people will do anything for those who encourage their dreams, justify their failures, allay their fears, confirm their suspicions, and help them throw rocks at their enemies. So it's such a powerful quote. If you know uh, the, their dreams, if you uh, tell them that it's okay that they failed, because that's the same failure that you failed with. Uh, mm. If you tell them that, okay, these are your fears. I understand your fears. I have those fears too. And if you confirm about their suspicions, okay, uh, this is your suspicion about this. And I believe that is true. And mm. then you throw rocks at their enemies. Like, oh, our enemy here is hunger, is poverty. Uh, mm. We're going to fight that. If you can, if you can convince people of all those things, it will be easier for you to persuade. Now there are a lot of um, modes of persuasion, paradigms of persuasion, but one good place to start is Blair Warren's one sentence persuasion. Uh, you can you can study about um, uh, Robert Cialdini's influence. Hmm. Uh, Wait, um, Robert Cialdini is one of the best persons to talk about influence, and he has six principles of influence that um, you have to learn, right? If you are going to convince people, there are six principles that you need to understand. The first is reciprocity. When you say reciprocity, you give first, and when you give, more likely people will give something back to you. Next is commitment and consistency. You need to be commitment and committed in doing things. You need to be consistent in doing things. Things Because if they, people see that you are committed and consistent in doing things, it's easier for them to 
uh, see you as an authority. All right. Next, you need to have social proof. When you say social proof, uh, that would mean like, okay, uh, here's a person who said that this is good. That's where testimonials come in. So uh, that's why when you look at ads, you see people saying, oh, this product is really good for me. Or when you watch uh, like an ad on the television about a movie, there are people who say, oh, I love this movie. Oh, this movie is amazing. That's social proof. Um, Next, you need to establish authority. You need to show that you're an expert or an authority on this. Mm. And um, you also need to make them like you. And lastly, you need to use scarcity. So when you say scarcity, like um, this is a limited time offer or Ooh. only six That's only six items. Yeah. That because you know like people buy something psychology it, it, it sounds like reverse yeah, yeah, psychology yeah 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 in a way in a way because you know when when something is scarce people yeah. tend to yeah. want to buy it right mm, so so for example so for example uh there are only 10 slots available for this online course it's like mm. oh i want to be part of that 10 because mm. there's a level of exclusivity to it yeah um another Another thing, uh, aside from Cialdini, Robert Cialdini's uh, principles of um, influence, which again are number one, reciprocity, number two, commitment and consistency, number mm. three, social proof, number four, authority, number five, liking, and number six, scarcity. Mm. There's also something that we copywriters uh, call the KLT. Mm. KLT means... Uh, First, people have to know who you are. Then when they know who you are, they can then make, you can then make them like you. And then when they like you, you can then make them trust you. People go through that. They don't trust you first. They mm. have to know and like you first. So um, if you're, you're going to start out learning as a copywriter, learn some of these things. There are a lot of things that you have to learn when it comes to persuasion. But the more you understand how to persuade, the more you, you get to know persuasion, the easier it, it is for you to write, uh, to work as a writer and mm. to work as a copywriter. So uh, learn One Sentence Persuasion by Blair Warren. Learn The Six Principles of Influence by uh, Robert Cialdini and um, KLT, No Like Trust. I can share to you, you know, we can have a whole episode of like two, three hours talking about principles of persuasion, but I'm going to stop at that because yeah. um, as a copywriter, I still am learning principles of pr persuasion. I mean, I've been starting, I've started my copywriting journey in 2017 and I have read, I've read these books, mm. uh, Influence by Cialdini, um, 48 Laws of Power by Robert Greene. Uh, one Sentence Persuasion by Blair Warren. A lot of books about psychology and persuasion because people need to be persuaded. You can't mm. just lay out your product or your service without yeah. persuading them. So uh, that is an, an, a very important skill set of a copywriter, understanding how to persuade. Um, and uh, number three, if you're going to learn how to become a copywriter, uh, number one is, what was number one again? Uh, get used to the discomfort of writing. Yeah. Uh, number two, get used to persuasion. Understand persuasion in all its various forms and how to use it effectively. And number three, you need to understand how uh, humans think. Uh, you have to know human nature. Um, hmm. One book that I've read that, that uh, somehow helped me with understanding human nature is uh, Robert Greene's The Loss of Human Nature. I think it was published 2018. Uh, people have to read that to understand how human beings think. I mean, for me, um, it's actually uh, being used right now, you know, um, and I'm still learning a lot of it. So uh, you need to know how people think. Uh, you need to know what we call uh, cognitive biases. Hmm. So when you say cognitive biases, it's like, okay, uh, this is how people think, and this is how you're going to use it. So um, I'm going to look for an example of a cognitive bias. Uh, 
that, that you know you can actually use uh, so mm. for example a very good uh, example of cognitive bias is what we call a bandwagon effect right so for example um one person uh, uh got a taste of 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 a chocolate chip cookie Mm. Right, post it on Instagram, and then everybody sees that. Oh my God, that looks like a, such a delicious cookie. Then mm. everybody buys that cookie, right? Because that one person influenced them. That's a bandwagon effect. Or here's another example. Again, closest to food. Uh, you and I have seen pictures of, you know, um, ube cheese pandesal. Have you huh. seen that picture of the ube cheese pandesal? Right. Yeah. Yeah, it looks good. It looks delicious because like uh, it, it's in a it's in a blue color. It tastes like ube, and then it has uh, melted cheese inside. So like, oh my god, mm. I want to have that too because he's having that. So mm. everybody follows. It's a bandwagon effect. So that is uh, a cognitive bias that you have to learn, right? So there are a lot of cognitive biases. And us copywriters, we use that cognitive biases to, to help us uh, write something that would persuade people and uh, convince people about what we want. Uh, so uh, that's part of human nature. So if you understand human nature, it will be easier for you to persuade. It will be easier for you to get people to do what you want. So... Uh, going back again to the three things to our listeners, if you want to start learning how to be a copywriter, number one, be comfortable with the discomfort of writing. Mm. Number two, um, understand how persuasion works. Number three, understand human nature. So if you know these three things, um, it will be easier for you to become a copywriter. Uh, I mean, like when I started, I didn't know that I needed to know these three things, but if I was back there starting out beginning as a copywriter, it's like, oh, I should have known th these when I started. I, I should have known these are the th these things uh, to start with to make me a better copywriter. So that would be my advice. Awesome. Wow. It has been uh, a workshop. I, I feel like it has been a <laughs> workshop. It's been an intense, gruesome workshop. And... Um, uh, if people want to connect with you, how do they connect with you, by the way? Well, yeah. Um, well, uh, right now I'm sort of building up my website. Uh, it's called bomaldez.com. Uh, right now I'm still building this up. And, and I hope that by the time your, your listeners are, are actually listening to this, uh, the website will be up. Um, Right now, we're talking in August of 2020, um, and in the long run, probably within this month, August 2020, I will be launching my website. So they can go to my website, uh, bomaldez.com, B-O-M-O-L-D-Z.com. Uh, they can also uh, connect with me through LinkedIn and Facebook. Uh, my Facebook is kind of full. They can, they can send me a message through Facebook. And uh, they can also connect with me through LinkedIn because right now I am focusing on working on LinkedIn. So these are the places where I can be connected with. Yeah. Wow. Uh, thank you again, Bo Maldes, for the amazing workshop and conversation. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm looking you, too, forward to, to the, the, the stuff that you've dealt with in deep you know you've cut in a little bit of meat there that uh, needs to be opened up and be roasted you know like you of philosophize course, course. writing i hope uh, i hope some somehow we're gonna create a season where you get to dissect and deconstruct and you know roast the meat as i um, mentioned <laughs> of course of course so, so, yeah. i'm actually uh right right here if you need to talk to me uh rajiv hmm. and uh I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but uh, this 2020, I am going to launch my novel. So uh, maybe if they can, they can work through that. <laughs> awesome. so, yeah. Uh, again, uh, thank you so much for being a guest on my show. Uh, it is a pleasure and an honor, Rajiv. Thank you so much. You are an absolute legend, and 
I'm a proud fan. <laughs> oh, and thank you. Thank I'm, you, man. I'm looking forward to see what madness you can come up with in the next uh, coming episodes on my show. Uh, thank awesome. you again, Bo Moldes. Thank you so much. And uh, for those who are, who are tuned in and who have, um, who have enjoyed this conversation, feel free to share this with, with your friends. You know, you, you get to learn a lot here. There's a lot of materials that you can learn here. With that in mind, folks, uh, cheers. I will see you in the next episode.